Hello friends and welcome back. It has been a while, but I'm glad to be back here with you from the beautiful studio here at More Guitars, More Music in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, today, I've got one and you know this is the kind of guitar that just grabs me and I gravitate for. It is the Epiphone Sheraton 2 Pro and there is quite a history on this guitar. Uh, one of the first Gibson designed guitars after they uh, acquired Epiphone back in 19, uh, late 1950s, uh, 56, 57 I believe, but in 1958 they introduced the original Sheraton and it has the body dimensions of an ES-335. They only made 650 of them in the United States between uh, 1958 and 1970. And I've seen some prices recently for, you know, $11,000 and up. So these were sought after guitars. Uh, it was the favorite guitar of John Lee Hooker. And, you know, as in 1970, Epiphone uh, the manufacturing went overseas. But now that they've come back around to this inspired by Gibson, uh, again, things are just changing in Epiphone, and it's really exciting to me. Uh, the Epiphone Sheraton II was introduced in 1986, and the major changes they did, they got rid of the trapeze tailpiece, and some of them had the, uh, what were they called, the, the frequencer, those the st staggered length tailpieces that were kind of like a trapeze, but, uh, and they had uh, kind of like, New Yorker style small humbucking pickups on them and when they brought in the Sheridan 2 they got rid of the trapeze and all that stuff put on just a good old stop tail and tunematic that we all know and love from the Gibson and Epiphone lines and full-size hub muckers and this one in particular this year's model is just killer it is not that much different in looks and as far as dimensions body dimensions it is an ES-335. Uh, laminated maple top, back, and sides, and the acoustic properties of this and the way they come through in the pickups is pretty incredible. They have a five-piece maple and walnut neck. Gives it great stability. The Grover 18 to 1 tuners, they just feel fantastic. They're easy to dial in. They hold tuning very well. The other thing that we've got in here are Epiphone's Pro Bucker humbucking pickups. And this guitar in particular really pointed out to me how well Epiphone has nailed that vintage PAF tone. I'm going to start on the neck pickup here. on here. I'm going to take it off for a second because this is there is so much acoustic resonance that comes through these pickups on here. I had to look up to see if they made versions of Pro Buckers that were not wax potted and they don't. These are wax potted pickups, so you're going to get the feedback suppression that you're looking for in a modern pickup. But it is just paired beautifully with this guitar. And hopefully I can... Uh, I want you to listen as I go from the low strings up to the middle strings in here. As I get up to the D and G string, you can hear that very 
very tight resonant bass just gets into this throaty mid-range sound. That I just really dig, and that's that's what you expect to hear from you know a period you know hollow body jazz box or you know in certain cases like this one from a semi hollow body uh, thin line. But th I just love that that tone in the mid range. Um, let me go up to the bridge pickup on here and. It's just so nice. You get uh, as you move through the strings, as you get to the middle ranges of that D and G string, you just hear this almost a human voice quality to it that pops out. And I really, really do like that. Um, the other thing that that I really dig about this setup, it sounds so much different than the dot or as you know Epiphone's calling it right now the inspired by Gibson uh, ES335 and I wanted to, to you know really get into why there was such a difference uh, one difference obviously is that on the Epiphone versions we do have the pro buckers here and uh, the ES335 line from Epiphone has the Alnico uh, 2 pros which are voiced a little bit more modern. Uh, I would say where this kind of gives me that 50s vibe, uh, the Alnico 2 Pros are more of, you know, 60, 70 vibe, just in the way they're voiced. Not quite as articulate on the attack, um, a little bit lower mid-range resonance to them, but this is... I mean, on... A humbucker on a guitar like this, I mean, you could. <laughs> country swing, rockabilly, or even straight ahead country with this, I could, you know, I could see. <laughs> you know, picking it down by the bridge, this is just, it's a whole whole different world of sound in here. But, you know, overall, you know, I do really dig this guitar. Let's take a quick listen to it in the, uh, in the middle position here. Now you've kind of got a feel for that. I'm putting a little bit of reverb back on because that's just, it makes me feel comfortable. It's like my comfort sound. <laughs> It's just gorgeous. Uh, absolutely just love that. Um, now, we've gone through all this. The other difference is that between this and the ES-335, just so you understand, my train of thought just got derailed momentarily. Um, we do have, you know, that composite maple walnut neck on here as opposed to the mahogany neck of the 335 uh, varieties. But it still doesn't explain to me why we're picking up so much more of the acoustic qualities of this guitar. Uh, I don't know. It's just some interesting mojo. I'm, I geek out on these things and try to figure it out, and I should just accept this. It's just a really killer sounding guitar. Now, on top of everything else we just went through, and when I saw this, my first reaction was, why did you even do that on a guitar that sounds like this. We can coil split these pickups. And one thing that I did like, the coil splits, they put on the volume knobs rather than the tone knobs. To me, it's just a more natural place to put coil splitting unless you're using, you know, all four of the knobs for a push-pull function. But anyway, let's just check this out in the neck position here. cool sound. I'll give you my thoughts in a minute. Let's go down to the bridge 
and take a listen to this. That's not what I was expecting a coil split on this to pick up. Even though, you know, we've got, we've got the mid-range scooped out, very bright and chimey, but you still hear the fact that this is a semi-hollow uh, guitar here. The, the acoustic properties are just really strong in this. I mean, listen to the chime on that neck pickup. Okay, killer. Listen to both of them together real quick. Just so many uses for all the sounds you get out of this. I mean, I really, I hear anything from, you know, classic, I'm talking 50s rock, rockabilly, country, uh, blues, jazz, it's all over the place. But like I've said, you know, I've gone on and on about the strong acoustic properties of this guitar. How is it going to hold up if you want to put some gain to it? Um, we're about to find out. I haven't really checked this out yet, so I'm hoping I don't get any surprises here. I'm going to go back to uh, full humbucker mode on these and try this through uh, a little bit of gain here and see what we get. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> bridge pickup, that is bright and biting and, I mean, definitely, these pickups are potted. It is not, it's not responding to this high gain at all like you would think this guitar would when you just hear it through a clean setting, but. <laughs> Let's see what it does uh, on the neck pickup on here. still hear that throaty mid-range even coming through with all this gain on here. It remains articulate. It doesn't just mud out. This is pretty killer. Okay, I'm going to see what we do with uh, some high gain in the uh, single coil mode. <laughs> Neck pickup, it still has got, it's, I mean, it's like a, like a wild man screaming in your ear. That is killer. Okay, let's see what it does on the bridge pickup. Bridge single coil. Okay, I have to collect my thoughts because I didn't have anything planned because I didn't know what I, that I was going to hear something like this. Okay, that's just impressive. That is, to me, surprising all the way around. Um, 
once again, we have here the Epiphone Sheraton 2 Pro uh, here at More Guitars. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. One other thing I have to say, I just am completely was blown away by that last test. One thing I have to say here, neck carve on here. Another pleasant surprise about this. Um, in the specs, they call this the 60s Slim Taper, and most of us are familiar with, you know, what they are calling the 60s Slim Taper from their um, inspired by Gibson Les Pauls and SGs, you know, a nice Slim Taper C shape. This, a very, very, you know, and I won't, not very thin, but I mean, it is, it's like the 60s Les Paul or SG necks as far as depth, but it has some serious shoulders on it. I mean, I would, there's no way I would not call this a D-shaped neck and a, and a really well-defined D. It's almost flat coming off of the fingerboard here. Um, so that if you're playing with a classical style positioning on your left hand, it feels just thin and fast. And then when you go to, for me, which is my typical thumb over positioning, and you just go, wow, that really fills the hand up. And particularly on, you know, some complex chord shapes, it really gives you the hand support you need that makes cording, because I'm not the best at cording, I'm not a great uh, chord player, makes it so much easier just because it doesn't feel like a you know a hefty huge neck but it just fills your hand and gives you such good support as you go through your chord shapes um, j just another one okay that's the last thing i'm going to say about it um, if you all have any questions about this guitar or any other guitar talk to the guys at moreguitars.com or visit us here in evansville indiana at more music they would love to talk to you. It is their mission to set you up with the perfect guitar for your needs. And I guarantee you, these guys are the experts on every brand they sell. They know their stuff. So give them a call. It was good to see you all again. And until next time, y'all have a great day. Continue to be safe. Check this out. See you. <laughs>